All of the problems covered in my videos can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link, you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I've uploaded to YouTube. I've uploaded over a hundred extra videos on this website that you can't find on YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. All right, let's begin our problem. Let's examine the aging of receivables method and to do it, we'll look at problem 54A. Uh, the problem says Stormer Company shows the following information on July 31st, 2017, the company's fiscal year end. And there is some information, accounts receivable, allowance for helpful accounts, and uh, some sales information as well. It says the company's accountant generated the following aging schedule of its accounts receivable. So we had five grand in AR, and you can see the math here, uh, three, four, if I add up this list, five grand they've just broken out their accounts receivable by age and the reason a company would do this is because they want to figure out about collectability and there's a rule of thumb and that is the older a receivable is the less collectible it's likely to be i have this friend and we um we watch ufc together we like to watch the the fights and um we always bet on the outcome of the fights we pick winners and we pick times in the round and do over unders and all sorts of fun bets and anyway a couple of months ago several months ago now i won the bet it was a ten dollar bet on the fight and i was the winner and anyway he didn't have the cash and the next time we saw each other I, I brought it up and he said, oh, next time we see each other. And then we haven't seen each other for a couple of months. And we saw each other again last night. And uh, he didn't bring it up and I didn't bring up the, the $10. The $10 isn't a ton of money to me, but it's like a bet. I'd like to get the money. Uh, and uh, and as, as time slips by here, it gets less and less likely that I'm going to collect my bet. It gets less and less likely that I'm going to collect my receivable. And in fact, that's true of companies. As time goes by, as accounts receivable get older, which is why we call this the aging of receivables, the older an accounts receivable gets, the less likely we are to see our money. So that's a good way to analyze our allowance for doubtful accounts uh, to see, hey, uh, you know, how old are our receivables? The older they are, the less likely they are going to be collectible. So um, really common in uh, company accounting software is you can create an aged listing of accounts receivable to say, okay, this is how many new accounts receivable I have. And this is how many that are slightly older and slightly older. And these are the very old accounts receivable. And then you can go through and make estimates. Okay, 20% of these aren't likely to pay. 30% of those aren't likely to pay. Uh, and that's what we do with this method. Now, if we believe anybody on that listing is not going to pay, we don't allow for it. We just write it off. We say, okay, goodbye. You know, those, that's debt has gone bad. But if we see people in listing that we're not sure if they're going to pay or not, we still hope so. We still expect to collect. Uh, then they would be considered here. So, our receivables that are zero to 30 days old, we have $3,000, that's most of our receivables. 1% we think is gonna go bad. So $3,000 times 1% means we think $30 of that is gonna go uncollectible. $1,000 times 5%, that's $50 is gonna go uncollectible. $600 times 10%, that's $60 we think is gonna go bad. 400 times 40%, 40% 40 of 400 is 160 bucks. So the total amount we think is going bad here is 90, 140, it's $300 even. Uh, certainly doesn't have to be an even number, it just happened that this was. So, okay, I haven't really read the full question. It says, prepare the adjustment to allowance for doubtful accounts based on the above. So what we compute when we take a percentage of our aging accounts receivable, when we did a percentage of sales method, when we computed a percentage of credit sales, we said, oh, that's the bad debt expense. This is not the bad debt expense. This is the ending balance of our allowance. And it is and must be a credit balance. So this is the ending balance of our allowance for doubtful accounts. What does that imply? Okay, we've got this T account for the allowance. We're saying, hey, where, wherever it is now, it's got to end $300 credit. Where is it now? It's sitting at a $500 debit amount. So 
Hmm. Well, what's missing then? It's got to go from here to there, right? From 500 debit to 300 credit. It's missing a big credit. How do I get from 500 debit to 300 credit? I have to credit the account by $800. Some people think 200. Some people go, oh, 200. No, no, no. If I credit 200, it'll be at a debit of 300. I want to go to a credit of 300. I got to credit $800. So I need to credit my allowance by $800. How do I do that? I credit my allowance by $800. What do I debit here? Well, remember what we're doing. We're preparing an adjustment for the allowance. It's the same as with our previous problems. We debit bad debt expense, $800. Uh, so we've done the journal entry now. I forgot to date it, but we've done the journal entry, July 31st, 2017. So what's, what's left to do? Well, it says show how accounts receivable is going to be disclosed on the balance sheet. Accounts receivable is going to be disclosed like this. AR minus the allowance equals AR net, our net accounts receivable. So our accounts receivable was 5,000 bucks. The allowance was 300 credit. So 5,000 minus 300 means 4,700 is our net AR. I'm legally owed five grand. I don't think I'm gonna collect uh, 300 of it. So the net amount, the amount I actually expect to collect is 4,700. This is the amount we report to shareholders. So if I were to break this one into steps, we take a percentage of our aging accounts receivable to figure out how much is going to go uncollectible. That's the estimate of our allowance. Step two, is to prepare a T account for the allowance to figure out, okay, what's the missing number? Step three, the journal entry, and step four, the uh, computation of ARNet. If you go back to your problem with percentage of sales method, because we do these together when we're learning them, the difference here is steps two and three are swapped. We take a, with the other method, we take a percentage of sales, we do the journal entry, then we update our T account. This one, we take a percentage of our accounts receivable, we update our T account to show the ending balance of allowance, and we use that plugged number, that, that missing number, that 800 bucks in this case, to, to inform our journal entry. So those two get swapped. The other items are, are very similar uh, between the problems. All right, that's it for this one. Stay tuned for our next video.